Um, I want to go to the story that has just appalled Americans all across the country, and, and rightfully so, and that is the story of this poor 10-year-old girl who was raped not once, but admittedly twice by an illegal immigrant. And while the Biden administration and the left are focusing on the fact that the girl had to cross state lines to get an abortion, what it failed to highlight that this wouldn't have happened to begin with had this illegal immigrant not been allowed to enter our country illegally. Never mind the fact that we're seeing a record number of illegal immigrants cross into our borders since Biden took office. Now Biden is telling ICE, in fact, we mentioned this the other day on the program, that it's their job now to help illegals get access to abortions if they need it. So, uh, you know, uh, Morgan, why was there no outrage from Dems on the legal status, again, of this admitted, he admitted to raping this 10-year-old girl, not once, but twice, a baby herself? Yeah, I mean, it's simple. They support illegal immigration. And they, I mean, if you look at New York City, it got struck down by the New York Supreme Court, but they were trying to allow illegal immigrants to vote in their local elections. And so the differences between the two sides on immigration in America today are crazy. Now, I have a really good uh, view on this that I like from Blake Masters. He's running for Senate in Arizona. And I was at the debate last night in the primary. And he had a good quip of, if your first interaction with our nation is to break our laws and then expect us to want to welcome you into society and trust you to then follow laws or be a good citizen one day, then I really have some trust issues there. And I don't really want to do that with you. Most Americans believe that too. So I think that's the same. If they're going to be um, disregarding basic laws when they're first entering and trying to enter the American dream like the left is claiming they're trying to do, then we have some serious problems here. I would say what's really upsetting is that the left proves that they care about certain agendas more than others and they are willing to disregard serious political issues and serious issues of safety, especially for young women and girls. Usually yeah. they like to be in these things just because the issue of abortion and abortion access rises up higher in this one instance. So you can see that they prioritize whatever fits the woke agenda. Well, and that's unfortunate. And yeah, it is unfortunate, but you, you actually just pivot, you know, that perfectly to my next point. So anybody that watches our network knows that we cover uh, our borders like no other network. We have a whole team of people that spend a great deal amount of time on there. Oscar Blue, Anin Cabillo, uh, our very own Ben Burkwam. And we all know from them, from their live reports, human trafficking is a huge issue when it comes to this topic. And it would seem that this would be an area where Dems and Republicans could try to find some common ground, but that's not what happened when Texas Congressman Chip Roy pushed a measure to increase penalties for child sex traffickers that he says Judiciary Committee Democrats unanimously rejected. Take a listen. I mean, as a father of two, as a former prosecutor, uh, it defies all belief uh, all common sense that you would say that someone who traffics a child in the sex industry actually puts a child into that environment for that child to be sexually abused, that that individual should not have a minimum sentence of 15 years. I don't think there is a prison, a hole underneath a prison, deep enough to throw that individual. Yeah, so this was Congressman Roy's amendment. It calls for a minimum of 15 years to life for anyone convicted of sex trafficking. Now, the committee did, however, pass H.R. 7566, yes, it's a mouthful, which increases the maximum penalty for committing sex trafficking within a school zone or on the premises or within a thousand feet of school sponsored activities. But why, Melissa, why on earth would Democrats oppose this? This would seem like something we could all say, yeah, this is this is a good thing. The only thing I can think of is that they just don't want to give any big wins to anyone that's a Republican. That's it. I mean, there really is no logical reason for this. And to say just within a school zone, what does that have to do with anything? It's happening all over the place. I'll tell you, 
the last couple of years since COVID, I started watching the Lifetime Network, which makes movies. They have so many movies. They're, they're made for TV movies about sex trafficking with children and teenagers. I didn't even realize that this was a real thing until I would Google about the real stories that they were making movies about. I was horrified, horrified about it. And actually yeah. it happens in large cities like New York. And it happens even in the middle, like even in, in the Midwest, it happens. Yeah. Even in places that you wouldn't even suspect. Florida mm. is another big place. It's huge. It it's huge where we are. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. 15 I live years in Charlotte, is- North Carolina, and we have a major airport, 77 and 85. We're not far from Atlanta. And I was recently at an event with the Safe House Project, and they were talking about the prevalence of sex trafficking. And it doesn't look like how you think it does. I mean, there are so many young people are sex trafficked and they're they're doing it through social media. They're doing it yep. through yep. Their schools. I mean, it is absolutely mind boggling. And I think the fact that more people don't know about it, the fact that it's not talked about is such a detriment to our young people. And I just I can't believe that this that they would allow this yeah. to not be prosecuted. To I the think highest some extent. people don't fully understand it and it hasn't been making the headlines maybe as much as it has in the past few years. And that doesn't just mean that this is something that illegal immigrants do, but obviously we've been seeing kids smuggled and and brought into sex trade that are coming across the border illegally. Um, So that's obviously an issue, right, Morgan? I mean, you hear about it more so, I, I would say more in the last few years. Yeah, actually, this reminds me, a couple weeks ago, I was down in McAllen, right at the border in Texas, uh, speaking at the Hidalgo County GOP's dinner. And I got to sit with Myra Flores, who just got elected to be the congresswoman of the region. And she legally, when she was young, I think six or so, her family legally immigrated from Mexico. And one of the most powerful moments of her speech, first of all, it was crazy there, the energy of the conservative base there. Did you know this? Her HQ for her campaign was at her pastor's office in the church. And that just was such a testament to how involved her community was. This was truly a community effort. But one of the most powerful moments of her speech for that dinner was how she wants more young girls to get the experience that she got. She wants more Myra's. She hates to see the stories of what's happening now for little girls that are like her that are making that journey. Because this is really about parents making those decisions and allowing their children to have to go through this process, knowing what's about to wait for them. I mean, I've talked to Congress people who have gone to the border and seen the Plan B empty packets that are around those little coyote dens or whatever yeah. they're called. And they are empty because a lot of young girls are not only going to get raped and then get pregnant or potentially get pregnant and have to take plan B. That's how disgusting and processed this whole thing is. Ladies, we're going to go to a commercial break, but stick